Hereford was always famous for its cattle, even in the the, you know, the dark ages, and and kings, you know, were, their tribute was collected in in terms of cattle because there was no no coinage until the till the ninth century. We know that horned cattle were traded here because one of the earliest place names is Rotherwall Street, which is what we call Aubrey Street today. It's behind uh, the green the green dragon. Uh, and that was the, in translation in Anglis, from Anglo-Saxon, was the, the, the well where the, or the watering place for the, for the horned cattle. The great, the great change that there has been in, in pedigree Hereford marketing, and probably it, 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 it's the same with some of the other native breeds as well, is the, the, the sheer quantity of cattle that we don't sell now, but did sell then. Well, we were having five sales in a year running by, run by the Hereford Herd Book Society, for whom we were the official auctioneers, up to 400, 500 bulls in January, various, various other bull sales during the year as well. Uh, now there are two sales in a year, and the quantity forward would be certainly nothing like as, as, as great as the January sale for the two sales. There were five sales in Hereford every year. We were one in October, another in November, then, then the big one in January, and then one in March, and then one in April. And there was 300 bulls at each of these sales going all over the country. But the January one, they went all over the world. And you'd have a job to find any empty hotel rooms or, or boarding house rooms in Hereford or, or in Leominster or anything. They were, the whole county was booked up in them days. And they'd, they'd, come, they'd be visitors from overseas and buyers. Um, from Argentina, Uruguay, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and a few from America. They, they were the biggest spenders, the Americans mostly. Hereford was extremely bustling. There were people here from all over the world. And of course, the people who really um, attracted us were the Russians because it was the time of the Cold War and things like that, and uh, all sorts of stories ran about. But they were definitely here to improve their livestock. And they took as their example the famous, famous Hereford, Hereford dealer, breeder in the world, Captain De Quincey. And wherever Captain De Quincey went during the uh, visits to the old market as it is uh, now, they were in hot pursuit. They always appeared to be followed by men with square shoulders and word soon got round that these were KGB and in point of fact they were British Special Branch keeping an eye on the KGB so nobody really knew where they stood at all. By nature the Hereford is a docile and well contented bull and these characteristics of course are extremely important to those working daily with valuable livestock. Well, uh, I think in the time I've been looking at Hereford bulls going back over something like 20 years now. I, I've only really come across one or two that have been uh, temperamental at all. They're very, very docile and, and really, as far as handling is concerned, create no problems at all. Third pole bull of the year. Born one Easter boy comes from famous stock and there's almost a century of continuous Hereford breeding skills behind him by generations of the Vaughan family. Vaughan has asked me to stress an outstanding homozygous sire. So there you are. Well done, the stockman. Oh yes, I, in the 80s I used to, with my A day at the job, I had, I had heard of the year six times in a row. That's based on how many, you get so many points for first prize and so many for second at, at all these sales. These October, November, January, it was like a football league through the year, you see. And uh, I was the first chap to, to win champion and reserve at the January sale. And that was a memorable day because we took the champion in, they, they sold all the champions together at 11.30 or 12 or some special time. And we took the champion, Easter Boy, in, and he made 7,000, which was pretty good. Well, they don't make that much nowadays. And then the next one to go in was the runner up, Fort Worth. He was a junior bull. And he made 3,600 to the underbidder on the champion. And we were just going out of the ring, and somebody said to me, John, you've got to take that bull, your champion, back in. And the, the chap from Uruguay wasn't bidding, he was just smiling at somebody. I said, oh my God. Uh, 
We haven't got the buyer. We had to go back in again. We hadn't got the buyer, the bid, and no, all the underbid. The underbid had bought the reserve champion. So who's going to buy the thing, I thought to myself. So we take him in the ring again, 7,200. The milk market in Bordeaux wanted a lot of bulls for their stud. The buyer for them had been late because it had been foggy. Two minutes earlier, he wasn't there, but he was there then, <laughs> enough to give us 200 pounds, 200 guineas more for the bull. Born one Easter boy goes to the milk marketing board. Regional Livestock Officer, Neville Bounds. Well, of course, we, we not only wanted that particular bull, we want some others as well. But uh, because we buy some 15 bull, Hereford bulls a year. But in this particular case, he was the type of modern bull, upstanding, plenty of stretch about him, great growth. At 500 days, he was uh, over 600 kilograms. The type of big modern bull that we're looking for to use on, mainly on Frisian cows, but of course, more and more Hereford breeders are using bulls from the MMB stud. In the evening, there would be a, a marvellous uh, dinner dance, and they'd have, uh, remember Juliana's discotheque was um, very popular, and then a sort of more formal band for the more sedate uh, people. A wonderful dinner and speeches, and a tremendous get-together. Very, very exciting and really quite elegant and uh, the um, buyers would come from all over the, the world and uh, all the hotels in Hereford would, would be full. And it was a tremendous occasion. And uh, it was very exciting, uh, especially for a small town. And uh, I remember very well because they used to go into my family shop, which is Pritchard's, and buy uh, cufflinks and squares and uh, um, ties and we would meet people from say South Africa that uh, we'd been sending things uh, to during the year so it was uh, a really marvellous occasion. Late Risers Club, a, a club for people who've made mistakes in their lives and you only get invited if you've done something really bad uh, but it all started um, when a guy called Trevor Parker really um, and uh, some of his friends had been to a pre-bull sale dinner on a Friday night at the Green Dragon and um, had a very large meal and uh, the drink to go with it. Uh, and they were staying at the Dragon and uh, they had so much booze that they didn't get up in time in the morning to see their Hereford bulls and cattle being sold in the market and they were sold without them. And of course this caused a great deal of hilarity and laughter and I think Mr Langford, um, who was a guy who the sale room was named after, um, thought it should be celebrated in some way and said, right, we'll have a dinner to remind you, you silly buggers, uh, for how late you were. And it grew from that. So everybody, every, anybody who makes a mistake now that this little group hear about, you're invited to join them and explain to them at a dinner why you have been so stupid as to do something like sleep in and let your bulls be sold when you weren't there. We, we've had odd um, beasts in the past uh, go up into the town. We had, uh, we did have one went into a china shop, but it, uh, but it was it was all right. It wasn't any big problem. My father said to me, he said, if you if you're in the alleyway and somebody says stop that pig, he said jump over into the pet, nearest pen, he said. Because these big sows, if they go a bit wild, they could rip your leg open without any trouble. Like. We, uh, my grandparents lived Pengrove Roads, and we were visiting one day. Mum pushing my brother in the pram. Rose sat on the ends, and me walking by the sides. And it was cattle day, market day, and the abattoir then was down Stoneborough Roads. And that's what they're doing. One of the, um, well, I don't know if it's a cow or a bull, escaped. And because mum, first thing she did was go in, it was a little jeweller's, the people's jewellery, and we, we shot in there out of the way. <laughs> I just remember that. <laughs> I thought, oh dear, yes. <laughs> Normally they were going into town, but uh, occasionally they'd go into side, side streets, which weren't, wasn't too bad, but. Uh, 
when they were um, into town. Obviously, they used to frighten the people. Uh, we used to go after chasing after them with uh, um, this, anybody who could run, run a mile and uh, corner them up and uh, eventually, hopefully, well, catch them eventually. But um, it was a difficult job on times, but uh, it used to cause a bit of a, a panic now and again. And in those days, we used to have drovers, we called them. They're called porters today, who, who would drive the animals around the market. And, and some of them um, used to sleep in, in the shed beneath the, beneath the um, where the buyers used to stand and they stand and come to work at eight o'clock in the morning and wait to be employed by the auctioneers and we'd say right we want you 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 um, that was how it worked i started there in 1967 i was generally a general laborer but uh, part of my duties was to uh, take tolls on the gate for the animals and the stock coming in clean the pens wash the pens down after the cattle was sold and it mean it means some um, late nights seven eight o'clock at night and some six o'clock early mornings um i went to work uh, still in the old market as a, um, a booking in clerk um, that involved um booking in the, the farmer's sheep uh, in knowing what's in what pen and who they belong to and then uh, obviously when they sell them who's bought them and what price they are um, and obviously that's what I've carried on to do in the new market. Mm -hmm.